Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the Bougie Booktuber tag. So, this was created by a book olive, and I was tagged to do this by Charles Heathcote. It's a bunch of questions, about 10 questions about uh, your booktuber buying habits. And so, without further ado, let's get started. Question one What is your average monthly budget for books? So for me, I don't necessarily have a fixed budget, but I reckon I spend between 50 and 70 pounds. I usually buy myself six new books a month online, but again, I get a lot of these from eBay uh, and get them second hand. So for example, Agatha Christie books, I can get them for two pounds, including delivery. The rest of the stuff tends to be from charity shops. Occasionally, I'll you know buy an, an indie writer's book, either new or I'll pledge in the case of Unbound, where you can kind of pledge to help to make a book happen, a bit like Kickstarter. So it really depends, but I think about 50 to 70 pounds on average per month. Question number two, what's the most you've ever spent in a bookstore? So for me, that was about 45 pounds, and that was at the Book Barge in Barton Marina. I've actually got a video somewhere, I'll link to it below, of when I went to visit it. It's literally a bookshop on a barge, and uh, I mean, the books were fairly expensive, but again, you're paying for the, the experience as well, you know? But I, I, I tend to buy most of my books secondhand from charity shops, so... I don't tend to spend much in one go. Question number three, are you willing to pay full price for a brand new release or will you wait until you have a coupon or there's a sale? I generally wait until the release has come out and people have read it and then the book's gone into the charity shops because there's so many backlist books anyway that I want to read. The exception to that is if there's something I really, really want to get to, I might pre-order it. But as a general rule, I'll, I'll just wait and yeah, get it for £2 in a charity shop. Question number four, would you rather buy one new book or several less expensive used copies? That one's pretty easy for me to be the, the less expensive used copies. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do love a beautiful book, but really for me, I just want to read all the things. So buying multiple cheaper books just means I get to read more books, you know? There are maybe occasional books where I do want to get really nice copies of them. I mean, even like, uh, you know, Northern Lights, my favourite book, or what I always say is my favourite book. Uh, I just have a battered paperback of that that I just I got that second hand you know so uh, one day I'll get a really nice set of the series but not today question number five what do you think is a reasonable price for a new hardback book a paperback an ebook so for me I would say uh, a, pay a hardback 12 pounds paperback 7 pounds ebooks 99p I think any more than that and you're just taking the piss a little bit to be honest and I mean this is coming from an indie writer, you know, I sell my books and try to make money from my books. I sell them for £7 plus £1.99 postage. And, you know, I I swallow up all the editing costs, the uh, cover design costs, the proofreading, the layout, all of that stuff, all the marketing. I have to swallow all of that up. So I don't really make any money whatsoever from my books. I just, you know, pay a little bit of my costs back. But I still try to keep them as affordable as possible for people. Question number six, is a signed book worth more to you? How about a first edition? And for me, this is kind of like, I guess, I mean, maybe sentimentally, if I meet an author and I get them to sign my book, then it's going to be worth more to me because of the sentimental value there. If it's a first edition, it's worth more to me because I know that it's worth more to other people. So therefore, like the market rate for it is higher. But um, yeah, other than that, not really. I mean, I have a lot of signed books that I read and didn't enjoy, so... <laughs> Question number seven. What is your most valuable work, sentimental or actual value? So for me, this would be one that I was sent uh, about a month ago. I'll link to my unboxing for it. So this is my edition of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which comes in this beautiful slipcase. And it's massive. It's by SP Books. Uh, you can see how like just beautiful quality this is. And it has the original handwritten manuscript for Frankenstein in there. Correct, uh, complete with Percy Shelley's notes and obviously Mary Shelley's notes as well. And it's just a beautiful artifact. But I think to buy these, it's a you know, couple of hundred quid. And they were kind enough to send me one for me to review and to share with you guys. So look at that. Beautiful. Crown of my collection, this. Question number eight. Will you pay more for a cover or edition you like better? And for me, very rarely, basically. Probably not. It, you, know, you know, maybe with my Stephen King books, I eventually want to get all of the Hodder books because I think they just look beautiful when you've got the collection. So I'll probably pay a little bit more for those because they're also kind of rare. But very rarely. Question number nine. What physical characteristics does a good quality book have? I mean, that really depends. A good quality book has to be well edited and well formatted and have a decent cover design, decent paper quality, all of this stuff, you know. And I think it's subjective and depends on who you ask. 
But for me, yeah, those factors that I just listed. <laughs> Question number 10. If you won the lottery, what bookish things would you do with the money? Well, I would buy a bigger house and I'd have a library that would also double up as my studio. Uh, so that would be the dream. And question number 11, bonus. Give us an image, actual or mental, of your dream home library. Uh, big. With lots of books. I mean, it's not far off my dream home library now. I've got the library bit. I just need um, the, the dream home. So all the books are fine. It's just my home. My house is shitty. Anyway, on that note, it is now time to tag some people. So I'm going to do what I normally do. Where's it gone? And I'm going to go into my recent comments and pull off a few people. Odd turn of phrase, that. I didn't mean that in a weird way. <laughs> so I'm going to tag Bookish, Deeney, Paul Reads Books, Bookish Islander, Sarah Hannett, Megan Hannett, Written in Blood, Todd the Librarian, Lattes and Mockingjays, Brad Proctor, Night Fear, and I Read Past My Bedtime. So there we have it. That is what I made of the, what was this called again? The Bougie Booktuber Tag. Thanks to Olive for making this tag. Thanks again to Charlie for tagging me in it. Thanks to you guys for watching. As always, let me know in the comments what you thought of my answers. If you agree, disagree with them, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.